Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will visit coal mines in eastern Kentucky. And someone in the Trump family is coming to Kentucky today. We'll tell you who and why. And researchers conducted a new study about cannabis in Colorado. We'll tell you what they discovered. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Taylor Upchurch. Today is Thursday, March 28th. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. Brandon, like we said earlier, it's a little bit warmer out there today. Mm -hmm. It really is, and uh, as we travel across the region this morning, you're going to notice valley ridge split this morning. Cooler in the valleys because that warm air rises on top of those ridges, and a little warmer, closer to 50 in some spots. Let's take you to somewhere we haven't been this morning. Let's go over to Pikeville, to down the Pikeville Medical Center camera overlooking beautiful downtown Pikeville. And everything is pretty quiet and nice there this morning, so a quiet start today. I miss when sun rise was starting to happen about this time but again time change it's you can see a little bit of a sliver here at the WIMT studio camera just a little bit of light over the horizon there as sun gets to gets ready to start rising here in the next hour or so Whitesburg this morning also still quiet temperatures 30s and 40s again those 30s in the valleys 40s on the ridge tops so your 12 hour planner 70 today after this or this afternoon maybe a little bit warmer in some spots it's gonna be a quick climb after that sunshine gets out full force the rest of the forecast is on the way in just a few minutes Taylor all right, thank you, Brandon. The Green New Deal is a controversial proposal created in part by Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And soon, the representative will visit coal mines in eastern Kentucky. Her proposal would replace all of the country's energy sources with renewable forms, leaving resources like coal in the rearview mirror. Coal miners we talked with at JRL Coal in Harlan County say coal mining in one of the, is one of the few options they have to support their families. And when coal mining is operating, it helps other local businesses in the community. Coal has provided me and my family with each and everything we've been blessed with as far as our, our finances. People often say that, but it allows us to provide for our neighbors and our community. It's still not clear when Representative Ocasio-Cortez will come to Kentucky or what part she might visit. And West Virginia State Police troopers pulled over a man for speeding yesterday, but the situation evolved into an interstate shutdown and a plot to kill the president. The interstate was shut down in both directions while troopers conducted an in-depth investigation. About four hours later, the driver was detained. State police officials say they found a gun and explosive powder in the suspect's car. He's being questioned about alleged threats to kill President Trump and blow up the Pentagon. The president's daughter is coming back to Kentucky. First daughter Ivanka Trump, who also serves as an advisor to the president, will tour Toyota's largest manufacturing plant in Georgetown today. She'll be there to discuss the White House's efforts about training America's workforce. This will be Ivanka Trump's second visit to Kentucky in the past five months. Back in October, she toured workforce development programs in eastern Kentucky. And former Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe could be looking to move into the White House. Democrats close to McAuliffe tell CNN he's moving closer to a 2020 presidential run. While on spring break with his family, the longtime Democrat has reportedly also been making calls to donors and friends. McAuliffe has said he would make a decision by the end of March. And the Kentucky man who drove into a crowd during a 2017 white nationalist rally in Charlottesville pleaded guilty to 29 federal hate crimes Wednesday. James Alex Fields killed 32-year-old Heather Hare that day and injured over a dozen more. U.S. Attorney Thomas Collins said what Fields did was an act of domestic terrorism. The defendant's hate-inspired act of domestic terrorism not only devastated Heather Heyer's wonderful family and the 28 peaceful protesters that had assembled at the corner of 4th and Water Streets, but it also left an indelible mark on the city of Charlottesville, our state, and our country. Fields will spend his life in prison. He'll avoid the death penalty. 
And a bipartisan group of lawmakers will introduce legislation today that would admit Puerto Rico into the Union as the 51st state without a referendum on the island's territorial status. Four sources familiar with the situation told CBS News. If enacted, the legislation would automatically trigger the island's admission into the Union, bypassing any referendum, the sources said. And UK Prime Minister Theresa May has said that she will stand down as Prime Minister once Brexit has been delivered, according to a Conservative Party lawmaker in a meeting with her. She will not be in charge for the next phase, she told Conservative MPS. She did not give a date for her departure. Those details come from Conservative Party lawmaker Simon Hart. And Boeing is moving forward with fixes to its 737 MAX airplanes, which have been grounded worldwide since the Ethiopian Airlines crash that killed 157 people. But at a hearing with the FAA and other transportation officials, lawmakers on Capitol Hill questioned the cozy relationship airlines have with regulators. CBS's Laura Podesta is in New York with details. Safety is at the core of everything that we do. Boeing says it has complete confidence in its 737 MAX airplanes. We're working with customers and regulators around the world to restore faith in our industry. Two deadly crashes in the past six months grounded the planes worldwide. An anti-stall system is suspected of playing a role in both crashes. Yesterday, 200 pilots and airline personnel met at Boeing headquarters near Seattle to learn about software changes and a new training program for pilots. To get their input and to earn their, their trust. Are they too cozy? In Washington, D.C., lawmakers expressed deep concern over the relationship between the airline industry and government regulators. Overconfidence breeds complacency. The FAA decided to do safety on the cheap which is neither cheap nor safe. Acting FAA Administrator Dan Elwell defended the practice of relying on manufacturers like Boeing to help certify their own planes. We make sure that they are experts in the field, that they have uh, the appropriate understanding of FAA regs and manuals, they have uh, professional integrity is checked, everything. But transportation officials acknowledged their credibility needs to be restored. Confidence in FAA as the gold standard for aviation safety has been shaken. The FAA promised not to rush the 737 MAX back into service. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Elwell was light on details when pressed by senators about what changes it would make in the certification process. He did say it would cost the FAA $1.8 billion and require 10,000 additional employees. And it's no surprise that Colorado has seen a rise in cannabis use since it was legalized for recreational purposes. Cannabis went on sale in the state in 2014, and as you might imagine, that has led to a rise in the number of emergency room visits associated with the cannabis. A new study confirms this and finds that while inhaled cannabis leads to more visits overall, edibles prompt more visits over psychiatric or cardiovascular symptoms. Cannabis edibles lead to more adverse drug events that end up uh, sending people to the emergency department than do inhaled products. If you'd like to read the study for yourself, you can find it in the journal Annals of Internal Medicine. It's in the issue published Monday. And St. Joseph Hospital in London is taking a bold step. They want to become the second hospital in southern and eastern Kentucky with a neonatal intensive care unit. The cost is high, but hospital leaders say the payoff is well worth it. WKYT's Miranda Combs explains why. Right now at St. Joseph Health London, the hospital is like most in southern and eastern Kentucky. When a baby is born here, they have this nursery with all the things needed for a healthy newborn. But that's it a huge rise in uh, the number of babies we're seeing that are needing that extra care. Last year, almost 1,100 babies were born here, but between 60 and 70 of them had to leave quick and get more intensive care at the University of Kentucky's neonatal intensive care unit. On top of that, just as many moms before birth had to head north to Lexington to have their babies. The whole family can't travel that distance to go to Lexington uh, to help care for the the newborn and be around and support the mother. 
Most of these transfers to NICUs are because of drug dependency. 15% of the babies born at St. Joseph London in 2017 had drugs in their system. We're also seeing women having babies later in life, and so you'll see more diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and those babies also are at risk of having preterm birth and needing extra care around delivery and then obviously being transferred as well. Combine all those problems and the hospital administrators feel it's time for a costly change. The cost of this level of care is extreme. Leslie Smart heads up the St. Joseph Health Foundation. She says putting a NICU in the hospital will cost $1.4 million. They are trying to raise funds in the community. Board certified neonatologist, nurse practitioners 24-7, and the specialty equipment that goes into creating a NICU can also be very expensive, very specialized equipment for these tiny babies. They say small towns stick together and sending babies and moms to Lexington isn't ideal for either. So they're hoping the community will step up to keep families together and in turn, a better start for the new babies. Miranda Combs, WYMT Mountain News. If the NICU is built, it will keep 80% of the babies from going to UK for treatment. And now let's check in with Brandon Robinson for another look at your weather forecast. So far, so good this morning as you're heading out the door. A quiet start to the day, calm conditions across the area. Maybe just a few clouds, especially down south. UVA wise, quiet up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain on US 119. A few cars starting to get moving over there. Temperatures again in the valleys in the 30s and the ridge tops in the 40s because that warm air rises and cold air sinks while well, we're seeing the big contrast there. If you're heading out the door soon, you're going to see some nice conditions today. Lots of sunshine, a few clouds there around, and temperatures climbed right around around 70 degrees a little bit later on. Taylor? Thanks, Brandon. We will have stories trending on WYMT.com next. Thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. A suspect wielding a sword and gun was shot yesterday afternoon after walking into the Church of Scientology in California. And for the second time, a jury has found Monsanto's Roundup weed killer played a role in causing cancer.